Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to walk through an ORCID record and um, just show you how researchers can link data sets into their ORCID record. So I've gone straight to the ORCID homepage, it's just orchid.org, and click sign in. This is a live demo, so um, I'm hoping that it doesn't come back to bite me, that everything goes off smoothly. And if it doesn't, that I have someone else to blame. But anyway, let's give it a go. Um, so there are a few different ways that researchers can sign into an ORCID account. Uh, you have a personal account option, which is the one that I will use. You can also sign in with your Facebook um, login or your Google Plus login. And there's also an institutional account, which you know, if your institution has set this up, then researchers will be able to log in using their same sort of staff number and password that they use to access other um, accounts at their institution. So just sign in. Okay, so this is my ORCID record. Um, and this is, I, I just want to talk through some of the things. So just to sign up and get an ORCID record is very easy and only takes about 30 seconds. The question is what you do with your record once you sign up. And of course, one of the main things you can do is populate your record with your works and use it um, and promote it to, to other people as well as a way of uh, looking at uh, the things that you've done in your research. Uh, so some of the options here are you can get a QR code for your ID. Uh, it's like a barcode that you can put on different things to promote um, access, uh, just a different way of accessing your ORCID ID for people. Uh, there's a, you can fill out the rest of your ORCID record. So there's a field here called also known as and you can use that to sort of add variants of your name. So I can put in a name variant there. Click Save Changes and there it is. You can add your country, uh, keywords associated with your research. You can put in your website, so access to your Twitter account or a blog or any other kind of website. You can keep adding to them there. And you can put your email address in. Uh, at at the moment, I have that email address as private setting, but you can actually make it public and you can add more than one email address as well. You can add in a biographical statement. You can add in your educational background, um, your employment, and I'll just turn to the funding. So if you want to add funding to your ORCID profile, um, in the future when you apply for funding, some funders are working so that they will be able to write your grant back into your ORCID record. So you apply for funding through Wellcome Trust and you authorise, and Wellcome Trust says, will you authorise me to update your ORCID record? You say yes, and then Wellcome Trust can actually write your grant into your ORCID record for you, which saves you a lot of time. And similarly for publishers working on the same thing, so that when you um, submit uh, a manuscript to a publisher and it's accepted, uh, the publisher says, is it okay if we write this publication details to your ORCID record? You say yes, and then the publisher can automatically write that information into your record. And there's another feature of that, which is that if you're an institution and you have institutional ORCID uh, membership, your institution will be notified of that changes, uh, of that uh, writing to the ORCID record so that they can keep track of what's happening with your ORCID record too. So if I wanted to add some funding, I just click add some funding now and I go to Uber Wizard for Orchid, which has about 200 different funders as part of that. And here it's saying, do you authorise Uber Wizard to um, read my Orchid record and add funding items? So you say yes. Now I don't actually have any grants, so it's not going to find any grants under my name, but I'm just going to demonstrate one. Um, I'm going to do a different search. So there's one grant from the Australian Research Council for Mark Penane. If that was me, I could tick that and add it to my ORCID profile. So I'll just go back to that. Okay, so looking at the works, um, I think I will just first show you that there are privacy settings here. So the thing is that with ORCID, researchers control their records and they control uh, the privacy settings in it and who has access to read and write to those records. And so there is a setting here, you can see that the green is everyone can see this, so in my public record everyone can see this information. Or you can go yellow for trusted parties, so only, and I'll show you who they are in a minute, 
and then you've got sort of an only me. So you can control the settings there. If I actually go back up to my accounts, you can see that the trusted organisations are listed here and you can see who I've authorised to uh, write to my ORCID record and read it. Um, and you can also add trusted individuals uh, on your behalf. So, um, yeah, okay, so I'm going to add CaptainAmerica at gmail.com to edit my ORCID account. That's going to say no because he doesn't have an ORCID account. So I can't authorise him to edit my email address. But if, sorry, to edit my ORCID record. But I can actually add someone else who I know has an ORCID record and happens to be at ORCID in this case, saying, yes, I can authorise Laurie Hat to edit my profile on my behalf. So that gives you an idea of the privacy settings which you can change yourself. Uh, you have control over that record. So just going back to adding works, um, so you can you can see in my works here that the source is myself where I've manually added something, or the source here is Crossref metadata search. So um, Orchid has actually connected up to Crossref and I've authorised Crossref to write to my Orchid record and they've written in this record for me. So I've got a couple of those like that in here. I've actually removed my data set so that I can show you how to add it. And you can click this button, by the way, to see more information about the publication there. But just click Add Works, and there's an option there of search and link, and that's the one I'll show you today. So what I want to do here is I actually want to add a data set. And this is, this is actually a real data set. It just wasn't funded, this particular research, but um, it, is a, it is my data set that I want to add from the ANS registry. So click on the ANS registry and it says, do you authorise ANS to write to my ORCID record and read it? I say yes. I'm not sure why it takes you exactly to this login screen and makes you authorise twice. That's a little bug I think that we will have to work on fixing. Uh, so I, it hasn't, what I have to do now is I'm taken to um, the Research Data Australia search um, here. So I just type in my name and here I can see this is actually my data set. If I click on this it will open up the page in Research Data Australia just so I can check it. But I can click it and I can say import selected works and it says please review it, make sure it's yours. We you say import and it, it reminds you that you can actually change the privacy settings for who's going to view that information in your ORCID record. So then I go back to my ORCID record and still showing 10 works so I just refresh there. And now it's showing 11 and the one at the end it should be is my data set. Now at the moment the, despite, uh, the default display for the type of data set when you come through the ANS registry is other, but there is going to be some work on that to change it to data set. But you can actually do it manually at the moment if you click that copy and edit button. And you, you can't actually select a work category of data set here, but you can actually select it here. And so you can say, uh, add to list. So what I've done here is I've copied that particular record. So you will have two, two authority records there for the identifying skill sets for repository staff data sets and one will be me and the other one will be the one I got from the ANS registry. So here I've made my change, the preferred source here to show that so it says data set by default. But we'll be doing some work on changing that so that the default is data set because when ANS was originally set up as to be able to import from the ANS registry into ORCID it was actually before they had done uh, work on that uh, to actually have data set as a category. So we need to go back and fix that. So the last thing I will show you before I hand over um, to our next speaker is there's a blog by Alice Meadows on um, 
six things that you can do now that you have an ORCID ID. And it's basically um, some of the things that I showed you, but it's really worth having a look, having a read through that because it's about populating your profile with works, um, expanding it out using the QR code, adding ORCID to your signatures, to your uh, Twitter account, that sort of thing. So that's it from me. And I am now going to hand over to Melroy.